Asia, the largest continent on Earth, covering roughly 30% of the Earth's landmass and home to two-thirds of the world's human population. This continent has a huge range of climates and habitats, from Arctic and subarctic conditions in Siberia to tropical climates in southern India and Southeast Asia. It is wet across the southeast and dry across much of the interior. There are mountain ranges and valleys, deserts, and tundra. Today, Asia has a rich biodiversity and a huge array of wildlife. But what was it like during the last ice age? The last ice age peaked around 20,000 years ago. Glaciers covered huge areas of North America, Europe, South America, and Asia. Ice ages are driven by factors such as levels of carbon dioxide, heat from the sun, and the position of the Earth in the solar system. The Earth's orbit varies on a 96,000-year cycle. The last ice age was during the Pleistocene epoch, which was a geological period starting 2.6 million years ago and ending 11,700 years ago. This epoch saw many glacial and interglacial periods. When the climate was cooler, the glaciers advanced. When it was warmer, they retreated. During the last ice age, global temperatures were about 11 degrees Fahrenheit or 6 degrees Celsius cooler than today. This last ice age began 115,000 years ago and ended 11,700 years ago. With cooler temperatures and a lot of ice cover, there was less precipitation and less rainfall. Snow and ice reflected more of the sun's rays, only adding to the cold. In addition, sea levels were much lower as more of the oceans were locked up as ice. This resulted in land bridges that had previously been covered by the sea. These bridges allowed species to access islands from the mainland and even cross from one continent to another. In Asia, there was less ice cover than other parts of the globe. The fluctuations in ice cover throughout the Pleistocene resulted in the expansion and contraction of flora and fauna as they adapted to the changing conditions. In Asia, however, this occurred to a lesser extent. Today, Southeast Asia is known for its seasonal monsoons. It is one of the warmest and wettest places on Earth and plays an invaluable role in global precipitation and weather systems. During the last ice age, when sea levels dropped, Southern Asia had a much greater landmass. Oceanic temperatures were 2 to 3 degrees Celsius cooler than they are today. Forest contraction due to less rainfall and larger areas covered in savanna were most common in Southeast Asia. Migration of humans and animals was possible along the extended coastlines and more open savannas without having to navigate the dense jungle. The formation of a land bridge between some of Asia's islands and its mainland also explains how some species were able to spread throughout the whole of Asia. Human ancestors populated Eastern Asia from Mongolia to Northern China and Eastern Russia. Fossil evidence suggests they occupied Asia 40,000 years ago, but 19,000 years ago, they vanished. This mirrors what happened in Europe. A new human population in the form of hunter-gatherers dominated Asia and Europe between 19,000 and 14,000 years ago. All other human populations disappeared. The mass extinctions that occurred during the last ice age and into the current Holocene epoch did not happen everywhere. In fact, most of the mammals that lived there 200,000 years ago are still in India today. In contrast, two-thirds of the mammals from Europe, Australia, Madagascar, and the Americas became extinct. It is thought that the climate and weather were more stable in India compared to the rest of the world. Asia was home to several elephant species during the Ice Age. Before the Pleistocene, other elephant-like animals that roamed Asia included Stegodotrabolodon, Platybelodon, and Tetralophodon. However, during the Pleistocene, there lived an Incas, a straight-tusked elephant standing at 10 feet tall and sporting 13-foot tusks. It was a sure-footed elephant that inhabited the jungles of Eurasia. It relied heavily on the diet of tree leaves, roots, bushes, and shrubs and became extinct when the trees gave way to grasslands. Another straight-tusked elephant called Elephus antiquus also roamed Asia during the Pleistocene. This species was massive 
and reached heights of up to 14 feet tall and weighed up to 15 tons. In comparison, modern-day Asian elephants can grow to 10 feet tall and weigh 4 tons. Deinotherium was also an enormous elephant found throughout Eurasia, but differed from modern-day elephants in appearance. It had strange-looking downward-facing tusks that protruded from the lower jaw, rather than the skull. Some think that it had a shorter trunk than other elephants, but this has been disputed. Stegodon was found throughout mainland Asia as well as the islands. The island Stegodons became smaller than their mainland relatives over time. Eventually, climate change and volcanic eruptions are believed to have contributed to their demise by the late Pleistocene. An incredible number of ancient elephants lived in Asia during the Pleistocene. However, none is more famous than the woolly mammoth. They survived until 4,000 years ago and were characterized by their long, shaggy fur and long tusks. They grazed grass along the mammoth steppe, a landmass stretching across Eurasia and into Canada, consisting of a cold, dry landscape dominated by grasses, herbs, and willow shrubs. Woolly mammoths were a similar size to modern-day African elephants, with smaller ears and tails to minimize cold exposure. They also had a layer of fat almost 4 inches, or 10 centimeters thick, to keep them warm. As with other Ice Age animals, woolly mammoths seem to have died out due to a combination of hunting and climate change. Some island populations became isolated when glaciers melted and sea levels rose, genetic diversity dwindled, and freshwater supplies dried up. Elsewhere, Climate changes shrunk the woolly mammoth's habitat from about 3 million square miles to about 300,000 square miles over the course of 36,000 years. Humans probably hunted the remainder to extinction using their fur for clothing, their tusks for tools, and eating their meat. As well as ancient elephants, Asia was also home to other prehistoric fauna. Recently, a cave lion cub was found preserved in Siberia's permafrost. It is thought to be the most intact Ice Age animal ever found, and was still covered in fur, had its internal organs, and a complete skeleton. Scientists hope to be able to analyze its mother's milk inside its stomach to enable them to determine the mother's diet. Cave lions were larger than modern lions. Their bodies were seven feet long, excluding the tail and it's thought that they didn't have manes. They were common throughout the last ice age and became extinct about 14,000 years ago. Cave lions may have competed with Asia's ancient wolves. These wolves are believed to have been domesticated during the last ice age by humans, leading to the domestic dogs we know today. Southeast Asia also used to be home to the largest ape that ever lived, Gigantopithecus, large water buffalo, and our ancestors, but what happened to them? Many have suggested that the arrival of modern-day man led to the extinction of Asia's Ice Age species. However, there seems to be more to it than that. During the beginning of the Pleistocene, northern Southeast Asia was largely forested, and the south mostly had woodlands and grasslands. When climatic conditions changed later during the Pleistocene epoch, forests and woodlands contracted, and grasslands dominated. Species, like the giant ape, Gigantopithecus, that thrived in the forest struggled to adapt to their new habitat. Grassland species, like giant hyenas, stegodons, bovids, and Homo erectus, dominated the landscape. Their populations exploded with the new open habitats available to them. As the Pleistocene epoch reached its later stages, Entering into the last ice age, climatic conditions changed once more, and with it, the habitats of Southeast Asia. Grasslands now gave way to forests and woodlands. Those grassland species that had done so well previously now dwindled. However, returning to a predominantly forested habitat did not see a return of species like Gigantopithecus. Now there wasn't just a change in Asia's habitat, there was a change in the food chain. Homo sapiens were now on the scene and thrived in the Ice Age much to the detriment of other species. They changed the habitat and landscape and hunted the animals within. 
That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.